Assalamualaikum. Today's lecture topic is rices. Uh, rices is a basically a very common disease, uh, but it was before common among uh, foreigner, uh, foreign countries or in the developed countries. But nowadays, it is very common in Pakistan as well. Psoriasis is a basically a chronic inflammatory skin condition characterized by clearly defined red and scaly plaques. Thickened skin, it, it is classified into several subtypes. Specifically, you can see this picture. It's a, a, a bit different uh, from the normal skin. It's a thickened uh, plaque with erythematous look, but upar, uh, you, had, you have seen the silvery scales. It's, upar aapko nazar aa rahe silvery scales. You can see them. So these are basically thickened scaly plaque, and, which is uh, called psoriasis. And now who gets this psoriasis? Psoriasis affects the two to four percent of males and females. It starts at any age, including the childhood with peaks of onset from 15 to 25 years and 50 to 60 years. We have seen many patients even started their um, psoriasis in before uh, even teenage or even uh, came to us at uh, eight years of age or seven years of age. And the uh, next is the uh, 50 to 60 year age. Elderly people are also involved in this. It tends to persist lifelong, fluctuating in extent and severity. It is particularly common in Caucasians, but maybe affect people of any race. About one third of the patient with the psoriasis have family members with the psoriasis, so it can run in the family. It's very important. It is running in family. If one of the uh, parent is involved, then chances of psoriasis is common. And if both are there, then 75% chances of getting this disease. So this is uh, important in uh, involvement of this. Now if we come to epidemiology. The common skin disorder prevalence variable from 0.3 to 2.5 percent. The prevalence is male and female is equal, and esti uh, estimated incidence is uh, 60 per one lakh per year. So <clears throat> it's like this. What is the age of onset? The mean age we have discussed 23 to 37 years. Currently, theory two distinct peaks with the possible genetic association, early onset and the late onset. This early onset is 16 to 22 years, more spare and extensive, more likely to have affected first degree family members. So they have positive family members. The late onset milder form affecting the first degree have family members nearly absent, but it can be due to some factors. So these two type of people are involved, early onset and late onset. Genetic influence is very important in this psoriasis because evidence suggests a strong genetic association. Studies of monozygotic twins show concordance with the, for the psoriasis is 64% in it. Then studies and multiple susceptibility loci have been identified. Disease expression like result of genetic and environmental factors are also there for this uh, influence. The common trigger factors are infections, streptococcal means viral infections, any sort of infection can trigger this uh, disease. Skin trauma is cabinization phenomena where it is injury or somebody scratched the skin or uh, some uh, uh, injury, then this skin trauma uh, known as cabinization phenomena in this uh, disease. And psychological stress may be important because it, uh, it influences all the diseases and it can aggravate any sort of disease. And the drugs, lithium, beta blocker, many drugs are involved in especially malarial drugs, anti-malarial, lithium, beta blockers, these are all um, these, uh, you know, drugs which can cause this disease. The sunburn uh, is important. If the sun is taken in uh, ex toxic levels, then it can increase the intensity of this disease. And metab uh, metabolic factors, calcium deficiency is important, which can cause this disease. And hormonal factors, pregnancy also increases this. 
we have discussed in which they said injuries are cards, abrasion, sunburn, sun exposure in 10%. And obesity is a very important and smoking, uh, excessive alcohol intake and the stressful events, medications, and then stop, um, stopping the oral steroids or strong tropical corticosteroids, sudden stoppage is very important. So that will aggravate the uh, disease. Now we come to the pathogenesis. Pathogenesis stress is a multifactorial skin disease with complex pathogenesis. Various factors on suggested to play a role in pathogenesis, especially T cells, APCs, keratinocytes, Langerhans cells, macrophages, natural killer cells, certain growth factors like vascular endothelial growth factors or keratinocyte growth factors. These are all taking part in this psoriasis disease. So characteristic lien of uh, psoriasis is basically from the hyperproliferation of the keratinocytes. And disease starts with activation of T cells by unknown factors, um, means antigens there uh, to trigger this disease. And the genetic background of disease may be suggesting this. Uh, I have already discussed. Psoriasis is a T cell mediated autoimmune disease. And the current hypothesis are known with skin antigens stimulate the immune response. Antigen specific memory T cells are the primary mediators, lead to impaired differentiation and the hyperproliferation of keratinocytes. Uh, we can see this. See, this, this is basically uh, involvement of uh, its environmental trigger or the genetic susceptibility, affecting this keratinocyte injury and increased antigen presentation. This will lead to increased production of pro-inflammatory IL-23, IL-12, 17, and uh, interferon, uh, this uh, IL, um, IFN, uh, gamma, and TNF, and thus IL-22. These all lead to then and activation of T cells by myeloid dendritic cells leading to this Th1 and Th17 activation. This will all lead to this IL-22 and IL-17. These increased production of beta uh, defensin and this, these are the epidermal uh, acanthosis or the abnormal keratinocyte proliferation because this proliferation of keratinocytes takes on uh, in normal individual 28 days while a hair it takes only seven days. So it will hyperproliferate this, uh, this uh, the epidermal layer and this will lead to this plaque formation. This is important in the pathogenesis. So you can see here this injury and uh, this all mechanism. Now we uh, discuss this histopathology. Histopathology is the, you can see this hyper uh, paracaratosis, so retention of uh, cells and this uh, elongation of the retinages. These are elongated retinages you can see. And then micro Monroe abscesses, these neutrophils are going inside the epidermis. And these are traveling toward this and they will form their abscesses. So these are basically the liens and this, uh, this granulosis, uh, a granulosis is there. Clinical features, strices usually present with the symmetrical distributor to add scaly plaques with the well-defined edges. These are symmetrically present. This is important in this. The scale is typically silvery white, except in the skin folds where the plaques are, uh, often appear shiny and they may have a moist peeling surface and the most common sites are the scalp, elbows and the knees. I have told you this this always present on the extensive surfaces of the body. They will involve this, these elbows, knees, and these extensive surfaces, the back and uh, the chest, they come on. Each, each is mostly mild, but maybe severe in some patients leading to scratching or the lichenification, thickening leathery skin with increased skin marking, painful skin cracks, or fissures may occur. When thoracic plaque clear up, they may leave brown or pale marks that can expect it to fade over several months. It's, it, it, this clear up means once they have been given these treatments, then they will leave a brown or pale mark that can be expected to fade over several months or even may uh, remain there. Common sites involved, I have told you, can affect any part of the body, but typically scalp, elbow, knees, and the sacrum. And extent of the disease varies. 
it depends on the severity of the disease. Types of psoriasis is chronic plaque psoriasis, cutate psoriasis, fracture means it involves in the flexures, cutate means it is involved with the uh, some sort of infection, stress that will enhance this cutate psoriasis in young children. And intradermic means uh, it has involved uh, the all viscera and the uh, body. So erythrodermic, it will be present with the mark erythroderma. And the pustular uh, means uh, they have formed pustular, form pustules over uh, these uh, ligands. Then localized or generalized, this can be. And localized form is palmoplantar, scalp, and nail. This can occur only in the palmoplantar form or maybe in the scalp only, and the nail is phreatic, onychodystrophy is there. This plaque psoriasis is raised inflamed DNs covered with a silvery white scale often on the knees, scalp, elbows, and trunk. And the gadate, I told you, small pink papules that appear less scaly, mostly on the trunk, and these are usually in the children. Inverse psoriasis means a smooth inflamed lens without scaling occurring on the armpits, groin, under the breast, and in the skin folds. These will be always in the, under the skin folds. So uh, it is usually not the presentation of a normal psoriasis because it involves the extensive parts, but it will be inverse psoriasis means flexural psoriasis. So pustular psoriasis, strial pustules found mostly on the palms and the soles that may cycle, erythema pustules and scaling. This is pustular psoriasis. These uh, few are very alarming situations of a patient when it presents with a pustular psoriasis or erythrodermic. It can lead to death even patient, uh, of the patient. Erythrodermic generalized erythema, pain, itching, and the fine scaling. Scalp psoriasis means involving the silvery white scales confined to the scalp. Nail psoriasis, thickened yellowish fingernails, and the fingernail with separate from the nail bed is the onycholysis. This is basically nail psoriasis. And psoriatic arthritis means joint damage, usually the hands, feet, but occasionally in the large joints. Then this, uh, this psoriatic arthritis leads to uh, deformity and it's very painful. So um, the patient is having these deformities. Type of psoriasis, typical pattern of psoriasis, post, this is basically gutate psoriasis, post streptococcal acute gutate psoriasis and widespread small plaques often results after several months and small plaque psoriasis often late onset of uh, disease and plaque is less than three centimeter because these are small um, plaques. Uh, you can, this is chronic uh, plaque stresses. Now we come to the chronic plaque stresses. Persistent and treatment resistance is always there. Plaques are more than three centimeters. In the gutted stresses, this will be like um, some sort of uh, circular, uh, less than three centimeter, or even more uh, one centimeter uh, have many circular plaques all over the body. Or this will be chronic plaque stresses, maybe persistent and treatment resistant. This is the area. You can see in the uh, extension part of the knees, uh, these are a thickened plaque over with the scaly um, plaque is seen on the extension surface of the knees. These are lower back and ranges from mild to very extensive. This can involve even you know, all the body. So chronic plaque psoriasis. Unstable plaque psoriasis. This is, I told you, this is unstable plaque psoriasis. Maybe the rapid extension of existing or the new plaques in cameraization phenomena, new plaques at the site of skin injury induced by infection, strikes, and drugs or drug withdrawal. These all are aggravating factors of the disease. Is unstable psoriasis will present in like this manner. And the patients have this sort of see uh, all over this is macerated skin and uh, scaly and erythematous skin. This is unstable or erythrodermic psoriasis. This is gut aid psoriasis. I told you these are smaller lanes all over the body or even involving the limbs or uh, the, the chest. This, this will be the presentation in the uh, gut aid psoriasis. So flexural psoriasis affects body folds and genitals. You see this um, armpit is there. So it's involving all the uh, flexural areas, smooth, well defined patches colonized by candida yeast. This can be super added infections, also be there, it's candida or uh, tinea infections there. 
this is scalp press is often the first or the only site of the um, uh, psoriasis which is uh, usually present in this manner you can see this uh, border of whitish silvery scales all over the hair uh, it, it look like the fabric dermatitis but uh, it's involved whole of the hair and uh, all of the head even the scalp margins are there this scalp margin i have shown you because of this um, scalp psoriasis involvement because usually margins are not there in scalp uh, subject dermatitis but it seems to be like same pattern and this palmoplantar crisis that can only present in the palms and the soles you can see this uh, scaly hyperpigmented in and if you see these hands it will be like differential diagnosis that if it is contact dermatitis or occupational dermatitis because involving the hands and um, but it's our silvery scales with erythema and the same is on the uh, foot maybe uh, presents only the palms or maybe both palmoplantar psoriasis in patient of uh, palmoplantar psoriasis it can present only in the palms maybe in the plantar surface of the feet so this both can be there nail psoriasis uh this uh, you can see this pitting in the right picture right side of the uh, picture uh your left side and my right side on equalizes maybe the uh, is all uh, nail is uh, detached from the bed and this yellowing this yellow discoloration is always there and ridging you can see these ridges uh, lines which are present and obvious on the nails associated with the inflammatory arthritis maybe their nail stresses is always having multiple presentations so you see this all nail is damaged and looks like this sort of nail so it can be only nail stresses Sporadic arthritis is type of sporadic arthritis are there distal sporadic arthritis. You see the distal uh, fingers are involved, uh, distal joints. Spondylitis means the sacrum or these uh, these uh, vertebras are involved. While this arthritis mutilans means uh, that uh, nail uh, are deformed. Uh, these are all uh, fingers are deformed by these deformities. So arthritis, mutilance, and this is anthocytosis means this ligament is uh, swollen and inflamed, and this dactylitis you can see this presentation. Dactylitis is there, or oh, this finger is middle finger is inflamed and erythematous. This is sporadic arthritis with the deformities. You can see this. Uh, the big catch point is that they, they have red erythematous skin on the arms and the wrist, and this all uh, hands are deformed. So these are basically sporadic arthritis. Even patient can present only with the sporadic arthritis, or even uh, first of all, the patient present with the scalp psoriasis or palmoplantar psoriasis or maybe chronic plaque psoriasis, but that will also uh, lead to uh, sporadic arthritis as well. The sporadic arthritis is very um, uh, deforming, and uh, the patient is usually come on the wheelchairs even because of this sporadic arthritis. And diseases associated with the psoriasis. Patients with this crisis are more likely than other people to have other health conditions listed here. Inflammatory arthritis, psoriatic arthritis and spinal arthropathy in 40% of patients with early onset chronic plaque psoriasis. So if I told you this chronic plaque psoriasis can lead to inflammatory arthritis of psoriatic arthritis or even psoriatic arthritis can present only the only presentation of a patient with psoriatic arthritis. So you know, we have to rule out the reason of the psoriatic arthritis. Inflammatory bowel disease is associated with the, uh, the psoriasis. Uveitis is also there with the psoriasis. Silic disease is also a many uh, important uh, associated uh, disease with the psoriasis. Metabolic diseases are obesity, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, gout, cardiovascular diseases, type 2 diabetes. These are all uh, important diseases which can be associated with the psoriasis. So we have to rule out the underlying many diseases and pathologies may be the reason of this psoriasis. How we are going to diagnose? Other dermatological disorders can resemble psoriasis diagnosed but clinically according to the parents 
distribution and history of lien and family history. These are four points that are very important. How it has started, the appearance of the disease and distribution, history of the lions and family history. So uh, history is the main key point for every disease to diagnose. So first of all, we should start with the history and proper history taking is a part. If you are going to diagnose a case, the history is the main uh, art to diagnose a case of uh, any sort of disease, even medical, uh, surgical or dermatological or any sort of disease. So these are the points how we are going to diagnose in dermatologies according to appearance of the lesions, then distribution, how it has started and uh, taken over the all body parts and history of the lien and family history. Patient will tell you yourself that uh, that has started on the scalp or uh, these were only on the my elbows and then it lead to all over the body. So this is the basically diagnosis of the patient. And we also go for uh, if uh, if a patient has a very uh, different sort of presentation due to some drugs or application of uh, multiple things, then we will uh, go for a biopsy of the patient and we will see the histopathology of the patient, uh, which I have told you these uh, elongation of retiridges, hyperkeratinocytes, and these are all things we are going to check. Uh, so the treatment of a patient, a general advice, patient with the psoriasis should ensure they are well informed about their skin condition. We should tell them about all the uh, its uh, disease because it's a remitting and a relapsing disease and its treatment and there are ben there, these, there, are, uh, there are benefits from not smoking, alcohol, excessive, maintaining uh, the optimal weight. It's, uh, these are all the associated diseases we have to uh, stop these uh, aggravating factors, especially the smoking. We usually uh, ask patient to stop smoking. One of the Babaji was our patient. Uh, we asked him to stop smoking. He said, I have already quitted that smoking. And uh, once we asked, he's, uh, <laughs> he said, I have quitted the smoking. But once we kept on asking and we have seen himself, he was smoking. He said, I, I told you that time I stopped it, but I can't stop it for lifelong. So uh, these are the uh, reasons smoking aggravates this disease. And topical therapy, mild psoriasis is generally treated with the topical agents. We start with the less uh, uh, side effect disease uh, uh, drugs. So we go for topical therapy, mild disease. The topical agents alone, which treatment is selected, may depend on the body side, extent and severity of the psoriasis and the condition of the patient. So we give these bland emollients and the cold therapy preparations, retronol, and salicylic acid, vitamin D analogs, as calcipetrol, and the tropical corticosteroids, and the combination calcipetrol and beta methasone, diappropriate or ointment gel or the foam, and calcineurin inhibitors, tetrolimus demiglobinus are given. So we first of all we have to look at the patient's condition. If it is uh, worsening because of those steroids he was using, so we stop it and we give him bland emollients. And if uh, this dithranol can be given, with even uh, we can go for uh, if a patient is having uh, not giving a response with the topical therapies, then we go for these uh, UVB or UVA or poor therapies. But we have to weigh the disease uh, outcomes and also the condition of the patient. How, if he is having this, uh, especially uh, these diseases can even uh, increase the uh, absorption of steroids to the body. So, so we stop them. And uh, especially we start with the if systemic treatment, we start with the methotrexin. So we have to weigh the uh, conditions, outcome, and also the internal condition of the patient. Because if a patient is having um, hepatitis or a disease of liver or kidney, we should stop these uh, drugs because this can enhance his uh, internal conditions. So phototherapy, uh, most crisis centers offer phototherapy with ultraviolet radiation and often in combination with the topical and systemic agents. 
types of phototherapy include narrowband UVB, broadband UVB. These are the chambers where we usually give them. And uh, a few of the patients have involving all of the body and we can't give them systemic therapy and they are not responding to the topical therapy. Then we go for these phototherapies and phototherapy poor. Then uh, we give them drugs or with the UVA. Targeted phototherapy is basically there. We have to target the area and then they, they, uh, we put them in the chamber for that period of time and they uh, get better with these phototherapies. They have to come back uh, after a month or even a 15 days so they will get better with this phototherapy. This is also a uh, life-saving thing because if we don't give uh, we can't give them systemic therapy topical therapy and it's not responding with the topicals we go for these phototherapies because these have uh, less side effects and uh, it's a very uh, good therapy and uh, with the less side effects and otherwise all are Uh, as usual, the time is always short. I try myself to make very easy and less uh, time, but it's always there. Problem is always there. Uh, so this uh, systemic therapy, moderate to severe psoriasis, warrants the treatment methotrexate, cyclosporine, acetretin, other medicines occasionally used for the psoriasis include mycophenolate, eprimilost, hydroxyurea, azathioprine, 6 mercaptopurine. These are all the agents we can use uh, by checking uh, his internal condition. If it is liver is involved, if its blood pressure is there, if it is hyperlipidemic, then we can't go for retinoids. So we have look after the many things and then we will give them these drugs. And if patient is non-affording, the main part of our treatments are there because patients are always non-affording. They can't afford those medicines. So we have to look out how we are going to manage this patient with the cheapest drug or uh, we can how can we help him and usually patient uh, because of this one of our patient was taking cyclosporine here in the ward because we were giving them but once they have been discharged and they uh, they can't afford the drug that young patient of 22 years of age he died due to this uh, lack of treatment and mismanaged at home so, so it's our dilemma of our things. The biologicals are there, but these are very expensive drugs, which we can't afford it, but few of people are affording it, so they use it. Tumor necrosis factor inhibitors, uh, anti-TNF-alpha, infleximab, adalimumab, and the internacept. And the interleukin-12 or 23 antagonists are ostekinumumab, and then uh, IL-17 antagonist is skinumab. So these are all uh, treatments of the psoriasis. We come to pityriasis rosea because I'm short of time, but just I have to show you this pityriasis rosea is acute self-limited eczematous skin disease characterized by appearance of slightly inflammatory oval papuloscamous ligands on the trunk or the proximal areas of the extremities. Incidence is 170 cases per 1 lakh persons per year. You see, this is basically a presentation of uh, pityriasis rosea. So they have a hairy patch there. You can see this. And what is the etiology? A viral etiology has been hypothesized and a PR is sometimes preceded by a prodrome. It's occasionally occur in small case cl clusters and it has shown to be associated with bacterial or fungal organisms. Reinforced by finding of viral-like particle in PR biopsies, a specimen examined with the electron microscope, and the most common viruses linked are human herpes virus 7 and 6 and 7. So these are important things. Now we come to the clinical presentation. Is a diagnosis of pityriasis rosea is based on clinical and physical examination of findings, which is very important. In our study, the uh, only the picture can't give you all that you are going to diagnose this case. We need history. We need clinical examination. Sometimes the uh, liens are the same. You have seen the pictures. 
so many liens are common and these are not always the presentation of a lien so i have to examine the patient or you have to examine the patient and the clinical picture is obvious while you examine or you take history or even may, maybe you uh, with after both of these you are unable to diagnose because of many factors and these differentials so we can't even diagnose with this clinical and physical examination maybe the medical specialist or some other person can diagnose the disease like you tell them you know, this uh, our blood pressure is 160 by 80 or 160 by uh, 120 so he will give you the drug according to age and then but we have to check the patient and then we have to come to the conclusion because so many diseases and we have so many differentials we were sick of these differentials once we were in dermatology unit we we always have differential of 13 to 14 differentials are always there in our mind when we all the pgs were standing and the professor is asking for the differential so many differentials were there that nobody can even imagine so we just keep on discussing those differentials so this patch is herald uh, patch is um, this starts with the herald patch this on trunk as 90 percent of cases which i have told you this big patch uh, this one is herald patch which is usually not obvious because the time period is gone and we can't uh, see the herald patch Patch is metals with slightly elevated scaly borders and lightly depressed center. So it can measure three centimeters or more in diameter and maybe the skin manifestation for approximately two weeks. And this, you may not see the actual Harold patch. So this clinical presentation is they start with the Harold patch on the trunk in up to 90% of cases and the patch is erythematous with the slightly elevated scaly bottles and lightly depressed center. This is main presentation. You see the lightly scaly border and the skin measure three centimeter in diameter and maybe only the skin manifestation approximately two weeks ago. And then prodrome Prodromal symptoms, what will be there? Prodromal symptoms, generalized malaise, fatigue, nausea, headache, joint pain, enlarged lymph nodes, fit fever, sore throats present before or during the course of the rash is 69% of patients. The generalized rash, also known as secondary eruption, presents on the trunk along the linger lines. So this is a Christmas tree pattern and they may extend to the upper arms and the upper thighs and the lesions are smaller than the hair patch and can continue to appear up to six weeks or even for the up till one year. And this is Christmas, the Christmas tree pattern. A rash on the back may have a Christmas tree pattern. You can see this both are the in the same manner, the pattern of the Christmas disease is like this. Even you have this acne form eruption is also like there and um, maybe um, many other diseases can also present like this. So, but I, I told you this, this is a very important Christmas tree pattern. We may remember this disease with this picture. So clinical presentation, a rash on the upper chest may have a V-shaped pattern. The mean duration of rash is 45 days. However, it can last up to 12 weeks. Moderate to severe pruritus occurs in 50% of the cases. And um, then I'm left with a very small time. The special population children present similarly to that in adults. Pruritus is more often. Black children have more uh, facial and scalp involvement. Pregnancy more susceptible to pituitous rosia because of their altered immune response and increase in overall rate of spontaneous abortions are there. So this is important. And then we come to the diagnosis. Uh, discrete circular overlayings and scaling on most lesions, the peripheral colorate scaling and the central clearing on at least the, uh, two lesions and truncal and the proximal limb uh, distribution with less than 10% of lesions distal to my uh, mid upper arm and the mid thigh. So the herald patch not necessarily be largest and appearing at the uh, least two days before the eruption of other lanes. Because usually the patient come after those eruptions, so we can't find out the herald patch. History of patient uh, from the clinical observation is there. So prognosis, the most patient, the condition lasts for a matter of weeks to the uh, last longer than six months. And the disease resolves completely without long-term effects and 2% of patients have recurrence. 
because I have seen a question, uh, I think, there in your um, uh, paper. So I have included this Petrus's rose here as well because they can give you a question from here. The patient parent education is very important. Information about the clinical course, impactivity, and relapse that disease will go away and reassurance typically spontaneously resolved within two or three months um, likelihood for the transmission and that does not occur in the patients. Pruritus topical corticosteroid in the medium potency and the topical antipruritic lotions or, or antihistamines are the main uh, treatment. So this is how we are going to manage this petrasis rosia. I have just completed and um, this is the basically treatment. And thank you for...